Hello everyone, uh, my name is Prajeshwari Kumari Gohil and uh, today I'm going to be presenting on Bhavnagar's historic structures then and now. So this is a lovely Indian heritage online campaign by the Heritage Lab and I'm very grateful to be part of it. Uh, there is a very interesting set of photographs, uh, part of the Getty collection actually, uh, which uh, depicts various historic structures of Bhavnagar. And it's interesting as someone living in the city to see how these have evolved, transformed, uh, many for the good, many for the bad over the years. So uh, let us take a little bit of a, a trip down memory lane. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do that first uh, by uh, looking at this uh, bird's eye view of Sihor. So the kingdom of Bhavnagar was founded uh, in 1723 by my forefather, Maharaja Bhav Singh Ji the first. The city, um, it's situated in uh, the state of Gujarat in Western India. So we're in the Saurashtra region of uh, Gujarat. And uh, Bhavnagar was a chosen location given its uh, proximity to the sea, which acted as a natural form of fortification and trade. So uh, prior to this, now, the capital of the dynasty was in this fortified town of Sihor. And um, it's just a few kilometers actually from Bhavnagar. But uh, the um, sort of historic part of uh, Sihor still exists and um, I think if we were uh, living in um, some European uh, city this town would probably be one of the heritage uh, attractions of that place because it's got you know these cobbled streets and uh, beautiful wooden carvings and um, it pretty much looks the same as this photograph depicts it to be um, besides the heavy traffic and a uh, large number of two-wheelers but uh, yes, it's pretty much the same and you still have the fortification, which is also in the form of the hill, as one can see in the photograph. But also it was a walled city, uh, a walled town uh, kingdom. So part of the remnants of those walls still exist till date. So it's very interesting uh, if one goes there now and actually compares it to this photograph to understand how much uh, still stands of that fortification. Here we have a, a very interesting photograph of uh, Maharaja Takat Singh Ji Gohil of Bhavnagar. He ruled um, between 1858 to 1896 and this was a very, very exciting time for Bhavnagar as a kingdom because you had uh, a lot of um, progressiveness, be it in um, you know the science and medicine, the basic infrastructure and uh, art culture. And uh, Takat Singh Ji, he was a visionary ruler, but he also had uh, very good advisors and a very good diwan who uh, kind of kept things in check and also helped the kingdom progress with time. So uh, this photograph actually reminds me a lot of the painting that was uh, done by the famous uh, Indian artist Raja Ravi Varma because um, it was the same time when uh, Ravi Varma was in Baroda and obviously um, spent a lot of time there. But during his time in Gujarat, he also visited other princely states and other kingdoms, and Bhavnagar was one of them. He made this uh, massive uh, portrait of uh, Takat Singh Ji, and this particular photograph reminds me a lot of it because, you know, he's in all his refinery with all his medals and um, got a very sort of poised look. And yeah, it's a very interesting photograph and it really um, sort of showcases him in all his splendor, I think. So over the past few, uh, next few slides, uh, we will be seeing a lot of uh, structures that were uh, constructed in Bhavnagar during his reign. And uh, most of these continue to stand the test of time and that's what is uh, very interesting. And also we consider ourselves lucky to actually be able to use um, these structures in many cases. Here we have um, the carvings, actually. So this is the Darbargar of uh, Bhavnagar, which was um, built by local artisans during the early 1800s, during the reign of Vijay Singh. But um, it's a uh, state-protected monument, actually. And uh, tragically, there's a signboard outside which states that it was built during the reign of Takat Singh Ji. But it is obviously not correct. Uh, in fact, it's completely wrong. <laughs> And um, Takat Singh Ji stayed um, here for a very brief period of time, following which he was in another palace. But um, this uh, particular part of uh, the Darbargar 
which is the carvings of the old darbar ghar it's um, it was the women's wing in the time so obviously you had the janana and the mardana uh, sections and this was the janana the women section and the western gate which still exists today but it's not as ornate as this was the men's wing the mardana wing and uh, the darbar ghar was um, built by local artisans and uh, what one can see here are very very intricate carvings of um, apsaras so you know you have these beautiful supernatural beings that are called apsaras and then uh, one has different um, sort of um, gods and goddesses that have been carved and depicted and uh, what i also did uh, find interesting actually was that there is the um, english the british uh, emblem the uh, royal family's emblem that has also been carved on the top of the darbar ghar which is not visible here but obviously we can see the apsaras and the uh, dwar um, uh, these things on the sides of the gate as well so um, it's um, actually very interesting because maybe this was a form of uh, peace and good relation between uh, the kingdom and uh, the british empire at the time um so yeah but you also have um these gandharvas these elephants there are a lot of carvings on them today of course the darbar ghar uh, this ornate gate still exists but inside it's um, quite a disaster there is uh, no proper conservation done and you have these really um uh, poorly uh, maintained and uh, managed uh, constructions going on inside the darbar ghar but um this particular gate is still um captivating to the viewer just as it is in this uh photograph so uh as i mentioned during uh, takat singh ji's time there was a lot of uh, progress be it in medical healthcare um all the basic infrastructure that you know a prosperous kingdom or a prosperous country today should have was there and um education was um doing i mean we were very progressive as a kingdom as well so you have alfred high school here and again you look at these structures and you think that they're all palaces in their own um design because they were built with uh, so much love care and thought and um to create these beautiful spaces and uh, here you have alfred high school so it's one of the oldest uh, structures actually in bhavnagar to still i mean that is still existing and it was uh, built in um, 1872 by uh, maharaja takat singh ji and um, there was obviously abundant amount of trade and excellent public works at that time and um, the welfare of the people was the priority of the state so um, the state engineer of the time proctor sims um, who was actually the engineer of bhavnagar for 25 years and um, again a lot of the uh structures in bhavnagar that still exist heritage structures can be attributed to him so at that time he uh designed this um palatial um uh, educational institute and it was just for amount of 1.5 lakhs and um maharaja takat singh ji named it after prince alfred uh, alfred the second son of queen victoria so he was uh, the first member of the british royal family to visit india and um it's i mean the school still exists today it's still being run and it's a beautiful um architecture they have um the indian and the saracenic um styles combined together and um yeah it's a uh, very interesting actually in this photograph because you uh, sort of see the gates in all um um pretty barren and today you have a lot of greenery and vegetation around and um the main structure is actually not being utilized as a school because it needs to be restored but um i do see a lot of similarities between um uh, this um uh, particular school uh's design and victoria memorial in uh, kolkata as well as i would say a little bit of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj terminus in mumbai so um yeah i think i would say a little bit of a resemblance but um, with the you know with the minarets and uh, the arches So yes it's a very interesting structure and um really takes us back to uh, that era similar to um uh, Alfred High School not similar in design but similar in the fact that education was given so much importance that each educational structure and institute resembled a palace more or less 
such was uh, Shamaldas Arts and College. Uh, it is one of the oldest colleges actually in the western region of India. It was established in 1885, and um, Maharaja Takat Singh Ji again was the one who provided land uh, for the uh, for the building of the structure. And um, he donated the land, but he named it in memory of his diwan, Shamal Das Mehta. And uh, the Maharaja and the diwan had a beautiful uh, bond. And um, I think this was his way of thanking him for uh, his foresight and his vision as well. Over the years, of course, the um, college has changed its location. But what I do find very interesting is that on the exterior, the architecture of the structure is... Um, not that ornate, I would say. It's uh, Rajula stone that has been used, limestone that has been used to design it. But as you can see in this particular photograph, there are these beautiful wooden carvings inside. And uh, this wood was brought in from Burma because Burma and Bhavnagar had very good trade relations. So a lot of structures you'll see even in Nilambak Palace uh, Hotel, a lot of uh, palatial structures that were built during the 1800s you uh, see uh, ornate woodwork in the interiors. And um, a lot of this woodwork still exists today. Although, again, the arts college is not being, uh, this particular structure is not being used uh, as the arts college today. But um, this uh, wooden ornate um, uh, part of the design of the college still stands and uh, it's a treat to the eyes. They also have, um, I think in the second uh, photograph on the side, one can see uh, a beautiful jali that is um, um, the design is that of the tree of life which is a recurring theme in a lot of historic structures I think in Gujarat. Here we have a uh, Majiraj girls school so I found this photograph actually very interesting because there's so much development that's happened in this area um, ever since m much more than what has happened around the previous structures and um, if I were to actually see this photograph and not know uh, not have been given the title of uh, where it's located, I wouldn't have guessed, even though I pass it almost every day. So, um, as I mentioned, Bhavnagar has always been a very progressive kingdom. We had, uh, much later, we had Maharani Nankuvarba, who got um, the highest crown, um, the highest uh, prize ever uh, by, the, by Queen Victoria for her reforms, and she abolished Parda system um, in Bhavnagar as well. And uh, Majiraj Girls School, it's the oldest girls school in Bhavnagar. And I think one of the oldest in Gujarat as well. So today this girls school is run by the government. But uh, it was uh, named uh, Ma Majiraj after one of the royal family women. So again, I find it very interesting. Majiraj uh, Ba was um, Takat Singh Ji's uh, late wife. So uh, it was named in uh, memory of her. Here we have, um, you. I mean, you can see in the photograph uh, just a lake and in the far you can see this structure. So in the midst of this man-made lake, uh, it's called Ganga Jalia uh, Talav, which means, um, I mean, it's Ganga as in Ganga uh, River and uh, Talav is lake. And it's a man-made lake, again, in the heart of the city, still exists today. What uh, uh, An interesting story about the Talav actually is that... Um, Somebody um, narrated the story to me about how uh, back in the 1800s, the Talao uh, was where the Bhavnagar Olympics, state Olympics, would be held. And uh, people from all parts of the state, all parts of the kingdom, would come to participate. And they would clear all the water from the lake. And uh, the games would be held here. And when the games would... Um, conclude, the water would be put back. I don't know how much wastage of water happened during this time, but the story sounded uh, pretty interesting. And um, in the midst of this lake is a beautiful chhatri. So I often refer to uh, Ganga Deri as it's called, and you can see it uh, far in the distance. I often refer to this as uh, the Taj Mahal of uh, Bhavnagar, because um, it was built with a similar sentiment. So in uh, 1875, Maharaja Takat Singh Ji, he commissioned uh, um, this British architect who was also um, the um, principal of JJ College of Arts in uh, Mumbai, John Griffith. And uh, John, Sir John Griffith, he came to Bhavnagar and he designed uh, this monument. 
and um, local artisans um, built the entire thing. It took them 16 years to build this structure because of its sheer height. And of course, you had the lake around it. So um, this was, again, uh, it was built in memory of uh, Takat Singh Ji's wife who passed away during childbirth. And um, it took a long time to be built, but it still stands today. And, and it still stands today. And it's a state protected monument. It's got beautiful uh, white, it's built by beautiful white marble, similar to Taj Mahal again. And um, it's not in the best condition, I would say, today. So I do think that there's a lot of preservation required again there. But uh, what I do find interesting is that, again, um, I don't know how artisans back then managed to carve these uh, beautiful designs on that marble. And you even have the Bhavnagar state crest of the time, the royal emblem. And that too has been carved in marble on uh, the Jalis. So I find the entire design um, just so visually appealing and aesthetically appealing to look at. And um, it's a shame that it's not been captured in this photograph, but you can imagine having that kind of view of this lake that one can see in the picture, uh, being in this uh, beautiful monument that was built with so much love. Here you have um, two Shiv temples, actually. I combined the two because um, We've been uh, focusing a lot on Maharaja Takat Singh Ji. And um, most of these monuments, like I mentioned, were um, built during his time. And here we have two Shiv temples. So you have uh, Jashunath Mahadev and Takteshwar Mahadev. So Takteshwar is um, on the left and um, Jashunath on the right. So Jashunath Mahadev, as the name suggests, is obviously a temple uh, celebrating Lord Shiva. And uh, the entire temple is made of uh, these delicate and intricate stone carvings. And uh, you have beautiful animals, each uh, you know, symbolizing strength, courage, peace, prosperity. So uh, the area around Jashunath, in this photograph, you, it's more on just the details of the temple. And one doesn't get um, an entire holistic view of the places around. But... Uh, this entire area uh, had beautiful lawns. Now it's obviously developed after independence, but it had these beautiful lawns and gardens. And uh, sadhus who visited Bhavnagar would seek shelter here. Um, and after independence, obviously they had these like wooden intricately carved housing, which was built for the people working in the government for roads and development. And uh, we still have these houses, they still exist. And um, what I do find interesting is that they are, uh, although they're built with uh, different material and different design, it's the traditional Kathiawari style of wooden uh, carvings and architecture that has been used here. And um, I find that very uh, interesting juxtaposed with the temple, which is, again, uh, historic and heritage and all of that. But um, it's still got its own identity and its own design as well. And... Uh, Jashunath was named after Maharaja Jaswan Singh Ji, who was also um, a ruler of Bhavnagar prior to Takat Singh Ji. And um, on the other side, we have Takteshwar Temple, which is so interesting because it's perched on this hillock and it gives you the entire view of Bhavnagar. If you're standing there, you get the best breeze, I would say, even in summer months and a lovely view of the city. You have 18 ornately carved pillars that the entire temple is supported on. I think we can see it in the photograph as well. And um, it has a beautiful main hall featuring this uh, three-eyed Lord Shiva idol and a lovely courtyard as well, uh, you know, stunning shikaras. And uh, it boasts of these exquisite marble woodwork carvings. So um, I think uh, marble and stone were these two materials that uh, Bhavnagar's ruler, especially uh, Takat Singh Ji, uh, made the most of in uh, designing structures and uh, commissioning uh, these places. And um, here uh, one can see, uh, so I left this uh, photograph for the end because I thought it was a good way to end the presentation as well as an ode to the uh, us, uh, to the rulers of Bhavnagar because these are uh, beautiful cenotaphs or chhatris as many people refer to them as. So as the term suggests chhatri and you can see the dome on top. So chhatri is uh, just like an umbrella protects you um, in the rain. Chhatris uh, were the name suggests that you know you have these 
ancestral memorials that protect you from um, all that's going wrong. So they're as good as uh, temples in that way, in the sense that they are a tribute or they are honoring um, a particular uh, elder or a particular person. And um, these chhatris, uh, what I find very interesting is that there are only there are actually only four or five chhatris, but their uh, workmanship it's on sandstone, as you can see the pillars in the photograph as well. They're much larger actually. It's just one part of the one angle of the chhatris that's covered here. And um, yeah, even today these are beautifully maintained actually, and uh, there is also a sound and light show being organized here for anyone who is. Uh, planning to visit Bhavnagar end of the year, I would say you must capture it. And uh, yes, yeah, so Bhavnagar is uh, historic places, you know, there are so many of them. These are just a few that, um, you know, I had the privilege of seeing in these old photographs. But I think what's interesting is that a lot of them, most of them still stand today. And I do hope that with the right kind of preservation and conservation, we can continue to have these for up for the next generation and um, they get to see this little bit of historic uh, part of Bhavnagar and also feel more connected and rooted to their cities and have a better sense of identity, I guess. So um, yes, with that, uh, I conclude the presentation and I hope you enjoyed viewing it. Thank you.